Hello everyone and welcome back to Clodden Painting Studio. Um, I've got another guide uh, to painting troops today. Um, <clears throat> after last week's one looking at using contrast paints for French Napoleonic infantry, um, today's video is going to look at how to use simple uh, old-fashioned acrylic paints to quickly achieve a, a tabletop standard finish. Um, the models in front of us are the 28mm French Napoleonic Infantry from uh, Warlord Games. And the paints we're using today mix of Army Painter and Vallejo um, with a little bit of Citadel um, at the end. The models have been spray primed um, with Army Painter Matte Black. Um, I find that their colour primers have a really good um, coverage um, and are also quite useful um, as they can be your final layer of paint as well. They're, they're designed to let you put a colour down um, and leave that for the, the final finish. Um, black uh, is quite useful. There's quite a lot of black on this ball if we look at the, the boots and the gaiters and the shackle um, especially. Um, and again, black is useful um, because if you miss any bits in the recesses, it doesn't matter because you've got the, the shadow there already. Um, so, model in the centre, um, laid down some barbarian flesh on the hands and face. The shackle cover was done in Banshee Brown. Um, any sort of light brown off-white... Um, even um, greys um, seem to, um, all these colours seem to have been used at the time. Um, I've also done something which was more of a finer detail, which is the collars cuffs um, in pure red. Um, usually I, I would leave sort of smaller details to the end when I'm doing most models, um, but the the collar especially if you're painting these models with the packs already stuck on it's quite tricky to get to with a brush um, so you, you run the risk of making a mess of, of things around it such as the backpack you can maybe see there's a wee dot of red um, has made its way onto the great coat that's rolled up on the pack so that's one of the reasons that I tackle that first um, is that you're not then having to push your brush past something that's finished uh, to get to um, and that can apply to all sorts of models um, the blue that I've gone for is a uh, deep blue. Um, over the, the black undercoat it does leave a, a nice dark blue finish. Um, I quite like a, a dark blue for, for my French but you, there are lots of blues you can use. Um, Prussian blue um, from Vallejo. Um, slightly lighter than this one. Um, they do do a dark Prussian blue which if anything is a little bit darker than Army Painter's deep blue. But um, for, for our purposes, it's a nice, cheap, accessible paint, um, and it, it goes down pretty well. Um, I have used two layers for the vast majority of the paints that you'll see today. Um, I do thin my paints with a little bit of water, um, just to help them flow a bit, and you run less of a risk of obscuring detail if your paint is too thick. Okay, so... Well, Move on to um, the next steps. Start putting in some of the extra colours. The first one that we've used is a Vallejo model colour flat brown. This has gone on to the musket stock, um, the models here, um, and the pack. And also used uniform grey for the great coat, great coat on the back of the pack. So if we turn the models around we can see this all a bit better. And one of my favourite details on these Warlord Games miniatures um, is the little string of onions that is hanging from the backpack there. Um, and I picked them out with some uh, monster brown. The next step um, It's a dry brush with a light, um, warm off-white. Um, I've used uh, Elfic Flesh by uh, Vallejo in their game colour range. Um, 
the dry brush helps to pick out uh, some of the raised surfaces on the black areas especially. It's, it's a quick way to do a highlight of the black. Um, I've also found that doing a little highlight at this stage before we do a wash later on just provides a, a little bit um, extra pop to the colours. And although um, this off-white, you know, it's, it's not a particularly good match for um, the blue um, or the browns especially, um, once we've got a dark wash on later, um, it knocks that right back. Um, you still get the benefit of a little bit of highlight, but it's not um, a, a big contrast. Um, I've also done it before doing the uh, white of the, the breeches, the jacket and the cross straps, etc. Um, because this colder white that I've used here, uh, colder off-white spaceship exterior, more of a, a light grey. Um, uh, dry brushing um, over the top of that with the alphic flesh, it would, if anything, be a bit darker on the, the raised um, edges. But, you know, it, you could have done that dry brush in the previous step um, uh, with the, the spaceship exterior, for example, or if you're using the, the alphic flesh for... Um, the, the breeches, cross straps, um, in this case you could have uh, done a dry brush over all of that. Um, the other details that I've picked out here, a bit of piping on the, the cuffs. Um, and if we look at the back of the model, um, there are uh, some straps on the pack, the musket strap as well, um, and the turn back on the, the turn backs on the jacket. So final steps in the, the painting process are, are to pick out the, the metallics. Um, one reason to, to do the metallics at the end um, is that once you rinse your brush out with um, metallic paint on it, it contaminates your water. And if you go to paint anything straight away after that, you're going to get little flecks of the, the metal um, paint in there. So I always save metallics to the end um, and then give the water pot and brush it a good rinse under the tap just to get rid of anything before the, the next step. Um, chin scales, uh, buttons, they're picked out in uh, Vallejo model colour brass. Uh, muskets, uh, barrel, bayonet, they're done in uh, army painter plate mail metal. The next step is to give everything a, a wash probably recognize this guy from the, the video that was done on um, using the uh, Armour Painter tones. Um, this one was done with dark tone. Um, I always mix in a little bit of this quick shade uh, wash mixing medium. Just helps Im improve the flow. Um, dark tone, pretty useful for um, adding a bit of black lining um, effect around the, the cross straps and that helps them stand out from uh, across the table. And you could leave the, the miniature at that. I think that's perfectly good tabletop quality there. If you want to take a little bit more time to go in and, and do some highlighting, and um, perhaps if you've got a model you're wanting to sit in the front rank of your unit, um, I've taken a bit of time to go back and add some highlights here. Uh, for the most part, just gone over this with the, the base colours. Um, so a bit of the, the star uh, spaceship exterior over the uh, white areas. A um, bit of the um, pure red on the, the cuffs. Um, I have added an extra couple of highlights. Um, the blue has had some uh, Vallejo Prussian blue. Uh, black has had uh, some Citadel uh, Eschen layer. And flesh has had Army Painter Corpse Pale. That just sort of brings up um, an extra bit of contrast there. Um, and, you know, takes what was a, a quite straightforward uh, paint job and just adds a little bit of, of, of flair uh, to the final finish. Um, but if you're plopping 24 or 36 of these guys down on the table, um, this kind of level of attention probably isn't necessary on every single one. Um, if you're looking at things from three feet away, you don't need to, to go to all this extra detail, I would say. So that brings us to the end of the video there. I hope it's been a useful one. If there's any comments or suggestions as to what you'd like to see for future videos, please pop them below. Um, and if you want to share this video around, feel free. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.